So uh, defence industry is obviously a national portfolio and we've got to look at all of the uh, opportunity across the nation. But looking uh, from, from Western Australia, uh, it's really about acknowledging that when we're talking about what's Australia's position within, within the Indo-Pacific, Obviously we face the Pacific, but we also face the Indian Ocean. And I think that is something that is becoming uh, an increasing priority, not just from a defence point of view, but from a more broader geostrategic point of view. And Perth presents an interesting opportunity for the development of defence industry, not just for supporting our own uh, defence force, but also supporting the defence forces of our key partners. And if we think about Australia's uh, place within the Five Eyes community, Perth presents the only Five Eyes port that could provide uh, full sustainment opportunities facing the Indian Ocean. And I think when we think about the opportunity uh, there, we could really look at growing our defence industry to support our key partners, particularly on the eastern side of the Indian Ocean. Obviously there's a number of other bases that some do minor sustainment works or there's staging posts for other operations. But Perth does present an interesting opportunity if we get it right in engaging with our partners, making sure that governments provide the necessary hard infrastructure to see that enabled. Uh, I think it's important that we also look at uh, the opportunity that Darwin can play in that. It obviously as the northward facing port in Australia, uh, Traditionally, a lot of that work has actually been done out of or near Singapore. I think Singapore's proximity to areas that are becoming a bit more, uh, involving a bit more tension is going to mean that there's a greater opportunity for Australia to play a larger role when it comes to major sustainment work for our key ally in the United States, but our other partner nation, navies and other areas of their defence force. So as I mentioned before, all of our policies are on up for review now following the election, but I think Indian Ocean patrol vessel uh, is a really interesting opportunity. It's something that's been an idea that's been around for a long time. Uh, even when WA Governor Kim Beasley was leader of the opposition, he was talking about this idea and uh, recognising the strategic importance of our uh, resources and energy assets to the northwest of Western Australia and also being able to work with our Indian Ocean neighbours having an Indian Ocean patrol vessel uh, does have a lot of merit and I think that's something we'll continue to look at uh, over the coming years. Looking at uh, the other issue that the RDA Perth identified in terms of the location of uh, forces, Australian forces, in, more in Western Australia, I think the force posture review that the government is now starting to undertake uh, will obviously look at some of those issues, looking at the spread of the defence force across the entire nation. As I said, I think the Indian Ocean is taking a lot more uh, focus now as part of that um, Indo-Pacific focus of what Australia does as opposed to merely looking to the north and to the east. And so that may be a reason for why there's a change, but we need to see what comes out of the force posture review. It's one of those things when you're sitting in opposition, we don't have all of the information available to government uh, through defence. So we wait to see what happens there. But I think if the government did decide to move uh, more forces, uh, whether they're Navy or Army um, or even Air Force into Western Australia, it does provide a really good opportunity for defence industry, but it also provides a great opportunity for Western Australians who traditionally are underrepresented in forces such as Army. If we had more uh, Army forces based here in Western Australia, we might see a greater uptake of Western Australians entering uh, the Army, and we might see the opportunity for some new and different bases uh, around Perth. The employment opportunities that come from that, I think, are something that can be quite exciting. And you know, ranging from not just people who join the Army who are involved in defence industry, you need more cleaners, you need more hospitality workers, you need the people who maintain those bases. And so the opportunity there, whether it's located in you know, Gosnells, in my electorate, or somewhere else, wherever it might be, um, should not be sneezed at, but we need to wait and see what comes out of the force posture review. I think it's important that you look at the strategic positioning opportunities. Obviously you've got HMAS Stirling, the biggest naval defence base in Australia, uh, in the southwest. Uh, of Perth. You've then got um, obviously the Lewin Barracks, you've got the Karakata Barracks as you get closer into Fremantle and to Perth. And then you've got the PSA Air Force Base um, obviously right up in the northeast, and the SAS based out at Campbell right on the west coast there. Um, I suppose if you're looking you can identify gaps you might think well uh, the southeast area of Perth um, has probably got the most availability of land that's not currently congested with uh, housing development but also located proximately to areas like the airport and HMA Stirling, you've got good highway links, energy links, all of those things. 
Um, but I'm uh, aware that there could, you've also got to look at what are the other tenure issues that arise. Um, as I mentioned, you know, maybe it ends up in Gosnells, but, uh, which is in the, uh, my electorate. But it, I, I think equally you could look at land that's out towards uh, Bullsbrook, Chittering, that area near the Pierce Air Force Base because proximate, proximity to the Air Force Base would also be something that could be considered. Or you might look at air, you know, land down towards Jandicott or somewhere else uh, if you're looking for air or connection to, you know, around Rockingham, Baldivis, if you want to be close to the Navy base. It all depends what some of the key drivers are for uh, the moving of what sort of force gets moved and why, why in the force posture review uh, those forces are being moved. My point of view, I look at the defence industry portfolio as a national portfolio. I don't try to break it down into this particular state versus this state or this electorate being preferred to that electorate. And I think when we're looking at government decision making when it comes to defence, of all the different portfolio areas, this in particular, we don't want to see uh, the case where government's making decisions because it's trying to set one state up against another state. We want to see decisions that are made absolutely because that decision is in the national interest. Uh, if that presents opportunities uh, for more jobs in Western Australia and more growth, then I think as a Western Australian MP, that's a great thing. But if the national interest says that uh, certain things should occur in other places, that's a good thing too. The national interest is paramount in no matter what decisions are being taken when it comes to defence and defence industry. But as a local member, I'm very happy to see that in my electorate I've already got some businesses that are doing some extraordinary work in supporting our defence capability. Uh, if there's opportunities for that to grow, that's fantastic because not only does it help those businesses and the people who work there, it helps them to put on more staff and critically, if they're developing that capability here in Australia, it means that they are able to support our defence force going forward into the future and that we're not just reliant on seeing foreign primes do that development development work externally to us and that's very important. So I suppose uh, the great thing that I've learnt coming into this portfolio, I've been in the portfolio now for about five, six months, has been being able to get out and meet and just discover this broad diversity of businesses that are involved in defence industry. Businesses that are exporting to the world, uh, some that export to the world but actually don't supply our own defence force. Businesses that I think the Australian population at large are not aware are doing some really cutting edge, bleeding edge technology uh, and innovation to support our defence force. And uh, that's been exciting to see the great work that our defence industry do and to see the innovation that they're developing and the the, the high tech work that's being done, not just uh, the, the normal trades and skills that you see when it comes to building a platform, whether it's shipbuilding or something else, but to see the innovation, to see the exports that are happening, to see where other countries are recognising that Australia is at the cutting edge, that we have the best technology in certain areas of defence industry. That's been exciting and I suppose what I'm uh, further excited about where next year can take uh, me and what I'm looking at is how can we better support those businesses that have the capacity to expand, have the capacity to do more work for Australian Defence Force to see our innovation expand and to see our, our local sovereign capacity expand and how can government better support them where at the moment the existing programs don't quite fit and I've seen a few examples over the course of this year where great businesses keen to expand can see further work opportunities and with a little bit of additional support through industry support programs run by government, with some tweaking on those, we can get even better outcomes for those businesses, which means greater capability here in Australia and more job opportunities as well.